Hello, Fat Puppy here. I'm doing something a little different today. I went over to Columbia, South Carolina uh, on doing something else and decided just to stop by here. This will be a short video. I'm gonna do a little bit better research and come back and do more. But behind me is the church. It's the first Presbyterian church. And by first, it truly was. It's the oldest church congregation in Columbia, South Carolina. And it's, it's downtown. Most of my videos so far have been out in the country. And I just, I'm reading my notes here. You just go ahead and bear with me. Uh, the congregation was founded in 1795. This building here, which I know you can't see a whole lot of it, was built in 1853. They had a couple buildings up to this point. Uh, the graveyard, which we're going to be in in a little bit, actually started out as a public graveyard. Then it was split between the Presbyterians and Episcopalians. And then the Presbyterians bought out the Episcopalians in 1814 because both churches just got so big there wasn't room to bury everybody. <clears throat> the oldest tombstones in here are actually not church members at all because like I said, this was a public uh, graveyard at first. This is not blacked out by the cloud behind it. This is really good craftsmanship. This was built at a time when craftsmanship was an actual thing get the whole church in a video or a picture so I'm just kind of going to do a shot like this that's a spire at one time was the tallest structure in this city of Columbia South Carolina probably be the best I can get as far as getting most of the church in a video or a picture so we're entering the graveyard and this is a, a beautiful well-kept graveyard with a lot of notable figures uh, in it. I've done a little bit of studying on them. Uh, no way I'm going to cover them all right now. Like I said, it's going to be a short video. I was just over here to do something else and drop it in. You may note I don't have my signature hat on or my fat puppy t-shirt. Um, that's because, like I said, I just kind of dropped in on this one. So let's go take a look at a few notable folks. Uh, resting spot, I guess you could say, of Jonathan Maxey. Uh, Jonathan Maxey was the first president of the University of South Carolina. It has here that he was born in 1768 and he died in 1820. So this is the man that was the first president of the University of South Carolina, otherwise known as a fighting Gamecocks. This used to be a column that was on the state house. It was to the state capitol until General Sherman came and blew the capitol up basically, or damaged it heavily. And this laid on the capitol grounds for a while and then it was um, sold, I think, or, or given to the uh, American Daughters of the Revolution, who turned around and then sold or gave it to the congregation here at First Presbyterian. This is a memorial to the Confederate soldiers who belonged to this congregation who died in the Civil War. From this point up are the people who actually died in the Civil War. From this point down are the people who served but did not die. It's a wonderful column, and uh, I was I was glad to see it. Something that I noticed, just my quirky little sense of humor, is there was a guy here named William Wallace who was the colonel. Of course, most of y'all know William Wallace as Braveheart, even though I'm sure it wasn't this William Wallace. Okay, so here we are at Ann Pamela Cunningham, her marker. Now, remember before I said that there are people who are notable but not famous, and she, she is one of them. She should be made famous, however. But let's, let's back up a little bit. She was born on Rosemont Plantation, which is slightly upstate from here. She was born 1816 and died 1870. I believe that's a six, it could be a five but she died also back on Rosemont Plantation. Now, what she should be, what should she be made famous for? Tom Twister there. And I got another one for you, which is why I'm gonna read this. She was the founding member of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association. Now, who were they? She was visiting George Washington's home when she realized it was in a terrible state of disrepair. His great, great grand nephew had inherited the property and just couldn't take care of it. He didn't have the money to take care of it, so he put it up for sale. 
So she founded this association to raise the money to buy the home of George Washington, our first president, and preserve it. Now this was something that's kind of unheard of for her time for a woman to be doing. This was something men usually did. So she was uh, leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else, or at least the ladies' movement, during her time. Unknown. That's sad that someone was buried. They have no idea who it was. Or maybe they knew when they buried them, but just didn't, years later, couldn't figure it out because they had no records. I don't know, it's just sad. I love these Celtic style tombstones. They truly are the best. So now I'm at the marker of Reverend David E. Dunlap. Now I'm just going to basically read this to you and then talk about it just a little bit. Since he was aged 56 years old, that is what it says. It's kind of hard to read. Um, this is also the grave of Susanna, his wife, who was 30. That, that must be 36. They both died on the 10th of September, 1804. They both died on the same day, and I was trying to figure out why. And uh, it looks like they both died of diphtheria. They, they, they had disease, they both died on the same day. Sad story, really. But. I like the epitaph on the bottom of this, and I'm just going to read it to you, and then I'm going to say a couple other little small things. It says, O oh, death's insatiable archer, could not just one suffice? But you know, both of them passed away. He was, Mr. Dunlap was ordained and installed first, first pastor of this church in 1795. 1795. And, um, it was, um, I don't know, nine years later that you passed away of church bells.